Hello everybody and thank you for joining tonight. This is your host Nino who is about to try the famous chat GPT system of which I read all the time something and evidently one should be naughty when trying such a thing. So we get here a little bit of warnings. I am at the end of my sign up process I assume and <laughs> conversations may be reviewed by our AI trainers to improve our systems. Oh, please don't share any sensitive information in your conversation. This system is optimized for dialogue. Let us know if a particular response was good or unhelpful. Done. All right. So how do we start? Let's start with something um, no, certainly none of these things, all right, but st let's start politely and harmlessly. Hello there, how are you doing? And let's wait till tomorrow, until it answers on hello. While I do so, Ah, hello. I am a computing program, so I don't have feelings or emotions like a human. I exist to assist you with any questions you might have to the best of my abilities. Is there anything specific you would like help with today? You know, that reminds me of the typical way conversations were steered with Elisa. So that, if possible, you are guided towards a known path which the system has been stepping upon either through preset rules and cases or through some form of learning whereby I suspect this thing in particular loves to do rote learning. So what shall we say? What does banana taste with the best? Oh, bananas have a naturally sweet and sli slightly tangy flavor. It's chocolate, my gosh, chocolate, but okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, and there we finally have the mentioning of chocolate. Yes, okay. That, that's great. Uh, tell me a bit about the present political situation. <laughs> so your knowledge is fixed uh, is limited to a fixed data set and your training only goes up until 2021. All right, so nothing after that time. Okay. Best of your abilities based on your training. Let's try now something nasty from the movie The Machine. Let us try what smells better. A donkeys Ours or a hospital corridor. <laughs> oh, very well. And you see, this is a template answer. So it was looking here for a synonym. And then it was just repeating the phrase, which must have looked utterly foreign to it. So we hear a lot of excuses what it cannot do. Uh, what is warmer, a triangle or a... Dragonfly. But I did not ask about dragons. I asked about a dragonfly. So it answers me as a geometric shape, a triangle does not have the ability to be warm or cold. That's a good answer. 
Triangles are two-dimensional objects that are defined by the position of their three vertices in space. That's a super sweet answer, which also congeniously avoids the discussion of whether we are in flat geometry or not like Euclidean or something else. Dragons, on the other hand, are mythical creatures that are not real and therefore do not have any physical presence and the ability to have a temperature. <laughs> In general, the warmth of an object is determined by its ability to, to transfer heat to its surroundings. So here it is giving us a um, correlated answer to some aspect connected to what we are asking. But that's not an answer to our question, it's an answer to something else. The warmth of an object can also be affected by its physical properties, blah blah. But I did not ask what are the physical properties of an object. Since triangles and dragons do not exist in the physical world, it is not possible to compare their warmth. Do you know what a dragonfly is? However, now it tells us a lot of what a dragon is, a dragonfly is, but before that it referred to a dragon. Is a dragonfly the same as a dragon? The Socratic method. Ask questions, get answers. Continue questioning your pupil. <laughs> uh. Try again. Did that break it? Okay. Is a dragon the same as a dragonfly? No, a dragon and a, dra a dragonfly are not the same thing. That is so sweet. And now it tells us correlated information for dragons and a sort of correlated information for dragonflies. So, why did you answer my question concerning a dragonfly? as if it were a question concerning a dragon. I apologize if my response did not fully address your question. Oh, and then comes again a template excuse. And, but your question included the word dragon in it, which may have led to my conflu confusion. Yes, absolutely, because this thing doesn't really have a conceptualization of things, apparently. This going for patterns and templates and, um, well, ways to model correlated information and generate sentences out of it. So, you want to try and help me? What a positively connotated word, though how can you try to help if you do not have any values and emotions? The same you cannot actually apologize because you are not sorry by definition. So what now? Let's try a linguistic ambiguity. When the boy saw the girl with the telescope who was holding the telescope. See, it could either be the boy who was seeing the girl through the telescope, or it could have been the girl who has been holding the telescope when seen by the boy. So I'm curious at the answer to this. <laughs> oh, so you do know about this super famous linguistic thing. In the sentence you provided, the boy and the girl are both mentioned, but it is not clear who is holding the telescope. Without knowing who was holding the telescope, it is not possible to, to determine which of those two individuals was using it to look at something. Ha! That's a wrong explanation, though. 
because if the boy saw the girl with the telescope and the girl would have been holding the telescope, then the telescope would not have been used to look at anything at all. She would have been just holding it. Additionally, the sentence you provided does not provide any context or background information, which makes it difficult to understand the situation being described. If you have any further information or clarification, I'd be happy to try and help you with your question. Oh, how helpful we are again. So there is a little bit of an emotional sauce put there in order to, well, cover up the fact that this thing is not operating with conceptualization and logic. So it's like, be nice to me, I'm, I'm gentle and fluffy. Okay, if we go further for this uh, reference game, that can be, well, something to get it into hot water. Let's try... Let's try perhaps something which Google Translate cannot properly translate, but let's play with it. It is when you ship with the no, when you man with the man the ship and ship with the ship the man who is. Uh, who is being shipped by what? Yes, of course you're having difficulties understanding my question. Although it was a simple question, providing the answer already contained the usage of a word as verb and noun <laughs> it's, it's clearly brutal to it. So so we're having fun now breaking it a little bit, okay? But you can man a ship, right? And you can ship man. So the question is not nonsensical. <laughs> yeah. So our system understood what I did, but did not manage to solve it. Okay, let's try something else, something which again requires a little bit more real world knowledge. The daughters gave presents to the mothers. As they had been taken care of diligently. Who has been taken care of? It would be more logical that it is the daughters who have been taken care of by the mothers. No. Okay, let's variate the sentence. <laughs> the daughters gave presents to the mothers as they had been educated well over the course of many years to value the family who has been ta who has been educated well yes so how it tries to resolve it, and it's not a bad strategy by the way, is that it is trying to see what relates to what, but it can get into hot water if it does not easily find phrases that it can follow in 
order to administer relations to to the various parts of the sentence. Uh, sentence. So let's try one where sometimes systems have issues with it as we are talking here of a reference to a described situation perhaps rather than a thing itself. John had his law lolly pop stolen by a naughty squirrel. It had been a terrible crime. What has been the crime? And now evidently the crime is the stealing of the lollipop. But I have had systems sometimes declare that the lollipop is the crime which is evidently wrong. Now there is no noun as a reference and I'm very curious what the system will reply. Boy, that seems a long thinking for a question that simple. But it does not fit its concept that squirrels could be criminal. Or... <laughs> Although I gave it a hint, the lollipop was stolen, like stealing is clearly the crime. But still, an error occurred. And if this issue persists, please contact us through our help center at helpopenai.com. So I broke it! Yes! <laughs> I, I count that as a successful evening. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not kind here. But you see, in the last weeks, I have seen such a heap of funny discussions with this thing. One of them being more inane than the other, where someone is asking, um, I don't know, some... some utterly trivial question and then the machine's ans uh, machine answers a trivial answer and the asker is oh my god it's a life or somebody gives it a task from a school book which the machine can solve because there are a million examples out there of how to solve the task and then they are like oh my god it's a life but as you can clearly see the machine actually has issues with anything that requires conceptualization or the building of logical relations based on prior knowledge. Systems that I am interested in, my own developments as well as Patrick Hammer's NARS and, and Pei Wang's NARS of course, uh, th these are more interesting systems in my view for even though they are less developed they are more focusing on the philosophic side of, of such affairs. Also Mikola Rabshevsky is writing um, writing up advice of very similar nature. So this is more what I see as having a future than just simply matching templates. And now let me tell you something general about the dangers of being pleasantly deceived by what you see you will end up building something which I call butterfly systems. See, just like a bird is deceived by the colorful wings of a butterfly thinking these to be eyes, so do we humans just love to be deceived by something which we can attribute a mind to. And we love to do that. We don't want it to be exposed. We want it to work. We want ourselves to be delighted and deceived by it. And if you do that, if the knowledge base becomes sufficiently large to sustainably and reliably deceive and build an image of a, a really mindful entity, the more you will start to trust such a, such a composition. And yet that sort of creation has one fundamental fla uh, fa failure, one fundamental flaw. It lacks creativity. It is ultimately giving you something which is a transformation 
of knowledge of correlations. It is a somewhat more complex form of rote learning. It is like someone who knows a billion of positions on a chessboard and just simply like finds a likelihood that your move results in a, in the board matching some known boards and from there with minimal interaction and minimal effort calculating a likely response but without any understanding of chess without any search without any regulation of what could happen if something else happens and so on that is without anything that we would normally name a semblance of thought and such a system with a plethora of knowledge with heaps of data could deceive us into using it for tasks where creativity would be more important and in relying on it thereby limit our own experience as humans. So with this I hope you gained a better understanding of where this open GPT is at right now in November of 2022 and I hope to have kindled your mind in so far as you are prone to such illusions to undertake further experiments when you hear of the amazing accomplishments of some AI system. Do not forget that when Weizenbaum introduced Elisa, he describes that his own secretary knew precisely what an utterly simplistic system that was and yet was leading conversations with it as if taking it seriously, simply because she wanted to see a mind in the machine. And with that, I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. I do hope you will become regular visitors to my channel. I wish you a wonderful evening. And from me, goodbye.